Malta is beautiful. There is no doubt. In part two of this Malta series, we take a ferry crossing to Gozo Island. And that's where we'll focus this episode on. Make sure you catch up on part one in the description below. For now, onwards to Gozo Island we go. It was like one of these. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, f everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. A beautiful good morning everyone from beautiful beautiful Malta and welcome to episode number two of this uh, travel series to Malta and we begin this video with the ferry crossing you see behind me I'm actually on the main island of Malta and this is uh, Paradise Bay so today we are beginning this trip in Gozo and that requires a ferry crossing so we're gonna drive our car into the ferry and head across to Gozo which is I think about a 30 minute ferry uh, ride and uh, yeah I can't wait so let's get this video started let's do this the Republic of Malta with a population of just over 500,000 people it's the world's 10th smallest country by size and the fifth most densely populated with a rich historic beauty and a coastline blessed by coves and cliffs, let's see what this spectacular destination has in store for the curious. In this travel series, we travel through seven countries in two and a half weeks. We started in Singapore, then found ourselves in France. From that long journey, our final destination is here in Malta, where we'll spend most of our time. We move on to Italy, Switzerland, UK, and finally Vietnam before flying home to Australia. So this series will be filled with heaps of flight reviews, train journeys, destination vlogs to last a few months. If you don't wish to miss any episodes, make sure you stay tuned for future videos, and they will be linked in the description below as and when they're published. Even better! hit subscribe and the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever the next episode goes to air. Giving me a like will encourage me to keep content flowing, so here's a thanks because your support is very much appreciated. To understand the need for this ferry crossing, one has to look at the geography of Malta. It is an archipelago of 18 islands with the major three islands of Malta, Comino and Gozo seeing any form of inhabitation. The most populated is of course Malta, then followed by Gozo, and there are only two official residents on Comino Island. Ferry crossings between Malta and Gozo have existed as far back as the early 13th century. These were sporadic and unscheduled and regular services crossing the channel did not occur until June 1885. Between then and 1970, there were about seven ferry companies vying for passengers during different periods of the decades. As we ushered in the 70s, these companies eventually dwindled down, merged, or simply shut down, and fast forward to present day, we have just one company, Gozo Channel Company Limited, ferrying us between Gozo and Malta. This has to be one of the coolest experiences ever. So the cars are actually double stacked. There's one more level below us. And as soon as the bottom is full, the ramp goes down and all the cars here will come up here onto this second level. So, oh, this is very cool. There are three such ferries presently plying between Malta and Gozo, acting as a lifeline to those who live on Gozo Island, a marine highway for commercial users, tourists, and daily commuters alike. There is a total capacity for 900 passengers and crew, with 72 cars. Besides us who are parked underneath, we are also joined by other passengers who have boarded on foot, 
walking in from the ferry terminal via a gangway connected to this communal relax area. We took this trip on the 27th of December, between Christmas and New Year. So you can understand why everyone is crammed into this ship. Looks like I'm not the only one visiting Gozo today. He was literally hustling and bustling. Did you know I have a phobia of being inside a ship? Which is why I decided to get away from the festivity of this common area, brave the cold winds, and spend the entirety of this 30-minute journey freezing my nipples off out on the sun deck. And this is also why you will never ever find me producing a travel video about being on a cruise. I just can't. And the morbid nature of my thoughts, and my absolute love for disaster movies, this car ferry is a perfect setting for one such movie, don't you think? As much as we tried to book these tickets online, somehow we could not find a way to do it. So hubby ended up running into the ferry terminal at Chirikiwa to buy the tickets in person while I waited in the car, which was parked illegally. For a car, the fare is 1570 euros per journey. And if you're just walking on board to take a day trip, the fare is 465 euros. During peak hours, a ferry departs from each point every 15 minutes, so there wasn't too much of a wait despite the crowded situation during this festive season. This is a roll-on, roll-off ferry service, so we drive off into our destination at Inga Harbour in the same direction we came in. The entire process was incredibly smooth, all within a choreographed clockwork-like precision. Now that we're back on dry land, we're headed to the first destination of the day, which is the town of Victoria, the capital of Gozo Island. After a lot of difficulty, so we finally found a spot to park the car. It's uh, pretty far away from where we are, so we're just gonna, where we're supposed to go. It's pretty far away <laughs> from where we are supposed to go. So we're just gonna walk because um, traffic is crazy here. It is, um, what's the date today? 27th. Yeah, so between Christmas and New Year, we are in the capital of Gozo. This is Victoria. So between Christmas and New Year, it's crazy, even the, even the mainlanders, why do I call it the mainlanders? Even the people from Malta, they come here for a holiday. So this place is packed. Yeah, so I am going to clock a lot of steps today. So let's go explore Victoria. Victoria is the largest town on Gozo, with an official population of just under 7,000 people. Victoria is the name given by the British government on the 10th of June, 1887, to commemorate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. Before that, Victoria was called Rabat. That's right, similar to Rabat on Malta, which was featured in part one of this Malta series. Some older residents of Victoria still refer to this city as Rabat Gozo, to distinguish it from the other Rabat. As Victoria is somewhat hilly, be prepared to up your cardio workout as you walk, because these slopes all lead towards the citadella, perched on the summit, high up on a vantage point, loading over everything beneath it. And it is here we clamber towards our first stop in Victoria. Depending on where you're from, this is citadella or citadella. For the sake of this video, let's refer to this as Cittadella. It's been thought that inhabitants have been here since prehistoric times during the Bronze Age, making this one of the oldest inhabited regions of Malta. The beginnings of this walled city began during medieval times, which started from the construction of a castle. By the 13th century, a third of Gozo's population lived within or around the Cittadella, as these walls started to buckle under the population growth, the town of Rabat started forming by the 15th century, leading to the present-day Victoria. Malta's history is peppered with one invasion after another, and Gozo is no different. The Cittadella has attempted to hold back invasions from the Arabs, the Ottomans, the French, and in recent history, the Cittadella formed a refuge of sorts during World War II 
as air raid shelters were dug beneath the city. Today, the Cittadella is mainly a tourist attraction, and it is filled with craft shops, restaurants, museums, and one gigantic photo opportunity after another. These museums are a great way to understand how far back Malta's history extends, because for the uneducated like me, my knowledge of European history only centers around what Hollywood feeds me, namely the Vikings, Romans, and knights in shining armor. To learn about prehistoric Bronze Age and how this has shaped Malta to what it is today was truly a fascinating lesson. Of course, we cannot ignore the piazza, which contains the showpiece of the Cathedral of Assumption. In line with what was happening in Malta during the 17th century, this church was built in 1697 with a dramatic Baroque-style facade, which looks different to the smooth faces of the other buildings in the Cittadella. This replaced the church before it, which was destroyed during an earthquake in 1693. There is more medieval stuff. I mean, oh, I'm tired just walking up and down the stairs. Yeah, lots of walking because um, this citadella is very, very hilly. So there's lots of climbing up the stairs, walking down the stairs. Um, it's hard on my knees and my hips, but it is so beautiful up here. Of course, because it's on such a vantage point, you can actually see the whole of, um, what place is this? This is Victoria. This is the capital of Gozo Island. Yeah. This is how my brain is wired. My attempts to understand someone else's culture is through their food. Just as well, it's time for lunch. On this day, Habi and I sink our teeth into something so quintessentially Maltese. I present to you the Maltese rabbit stew. My previous experiences with a rabbit is the French way, braised in white wine. The Maltese version is no different from a red wine braise with heaps of tomatoes, herbs and spices, which can sometimes have a kick depending on who cooks it for you. Because Maltese cuisine marries the best of Sicilian and Arab influences, the end result is something incredibly down my alley. It was an absolute flavor bomb. Rabbit is something which has to be done just right. Two under, and you'll be rawish. Two over, the meat will become extremely tough, you'll break your teeth. This was just nice. Very comforting on this winter afternoon. Malta's coastline is blessed by natural beauty formed by eroding harsh limestone rocks leading to dramatic cliffs, caves and natural arcs. One such arc was the Azure Window located in Dwira Bay. This was once a popular tourist attraction on Gozo until March 2017 when it all collapsed during a ferocious storm. What remains today is this stump which is a reminder of its glorious past. Nevertheless, this is still a great location to come to because for film geeks, it is also the setting where What's-Its-Face married What's-Her-Name in Game of Thrones. It's not surprising given Malta's uniquely stunning landscape, a lot of movies have been filmed in this country. A word of caution though, this location has been left in its natural state as it should be. So that means there are no walking paths to smoothen out your exploration. So while you marvel at the beauty of what's around, just watch where you're going because of the uneven ground. We're now driving into the village of Zebuch, which has a population of just under 3,000 residents. This village is built on two distinctive hilltop plateaus of Ta Abram and Ishagra Ta Zebuch. When viewed from a distance, this forms one of the most stunning and dramatic sceneries you can ever capture from an aerial perspective. Zebuch in Maltese means olives, as a reference to the main agricultural crop this area used to produce. With an area of 7.6 square kilometers, Zebuch is the largest council area on Gozo, which not only encompasses the village, 
but also the fishing port and tourist area of Masa El Fon, which we will end up later today. If there is any country out there who knows how to decorate a church, it's Malta. This church was built in 1726, and it's heritage listed in the National Inventory of Cultural Property of the Maltese Island. The exterior of these churches, despite its dramatic Baroque facades, are all monotone like most structures in Malta. But once you step inside, be prepared to be blown away by how ornate everything is. We're talking about the generous use of onyx marble, elaborate chandeliers, and an overall rich tapestry of earthy colours. Since this was my first Maltese church I walked into, it was definitely a jaw-dropping first impression. Just when I thought I've seen everything, there is the Mosta Dome back in Malta, which I would visit in part 3. So I shall save that bit for later. Welcome to Zabuch. Now on Gozo, unlike um, Malta, you've got siesta. So between 2pm to 4pm, everyone goes to sleep. So it's very peaceful here. And oh my god, check out this view. Very nice, eh? Yeah. Do you know, they are serious about this siesta hour. It is so quiet. I almost feel like I have to whisper and not talk too loudly. So I do not disturb any of them taking a nap in there. Yeah, I felt bad um, triggering the dog back there. But yeah, this is siesta hour in Zabuch on Gozo Island in Malta. <laughs> Zebuc village isn't traditionally touristy. So why do we end up here? Well, Habi's father was born here and he lived right at this house across the road. Today, on the 27th of December, is his father's birthday. And we're here to offer a toast to remember him by. Suppose I also take this moment to reflect on how my father-in-law would have been like in person since I've never met him. Nevertheless, I offer a toast as well. A toast of a cup of cappuccino on the balcony of a cafe overlooking the countryside. This is definitely an afternoon of tranquility, underscored by the siesta hour of Zibuc. Would you like to visit Zibuc? Let me know in the comments. The final destination for this episode is Masa El Fon. This beach side town is the northern tip of the Zebuch local council and has a permanent population of just over 700 people. In summer, this number swells dramatically many times over. So is it a good thing visiting in winter when it's considered low season? Well, let's find out. It's very quick, we are now uh, coming close to dinner time and the sun is setting. So we have just settled into our accommodation in Mao Safon and we're heading to the waterfront to see what can we um, find for dinner. Yeah, Mao Safon Beach. I filmed these footages without first determining the correct pronunciation of Masa El Fon. So please accept my apologies because I cringe every time I hear myself butcher the beautiful name of this town. As it wasn't intentional, I do hope to do better going forward. Anyway, here we are along a seaside promenade facing the Mediterranean Sea during low season in winter. As the roads around here are incredibly narrow, parking spaces are a luxury. And despite this being low season, we did have huge problems trying to look for a parking space. I cannot imagine what will happen in summer when Marcel Fawn kicked into full gear. How do they cope? One big plus visiting in winter, there are literally no crowds, which is a huge advantage in my book. On the flip side though, most restaurants are shut for the season, so it does look like a film set from The Walking Dead. So, will we find anything to eat for dinner tonight? 
So anyway, the sun has set and we are all ready for dinner. It's actually not too late. It is just uh, coming to about 5.30. But because it's winter, so the sun sets a lot um, earlier than usual. So this is um, Malsophone, where we are at the coast. This is the sea. So what else is there to do but settle down for a seafood dinner? So we are settling down at the restaurant behind me. It's called Il Gambero. So I'm looking forward to a lot of seafood, a lot of rich seafood today. So I am so hungry. I can't wait to start dinner. Um, as you can tell, my, my eyes are a bit heavy because uh, I'm still a bit jet lagged from the journey that I've had so far. But anyway, that's not going to stop me from enjoying my dinner tonight. So let's do this. As we were walking along the promenade, I counted about 25 restaurants. And tonight, only seven were opened for business. That made my choice incredibly easy, so I did not have to fry my brains out trying to decide which restaurant to go to. See, there are advantages of visiting in low season. And the prices were also extremely reasonable as well. In fact, make that my entire Malta dining experience so far. I found restaurants on Gozo and Malta to be alright, and no one was really out to burn a hole in your pocket. On the table tonight was more rabbit for hubby, and now he's trying the pan-fried version with lots of garlic. Gotta say, I do prefer the braised one though. And oh my word, when this arrived on the table, I was really horrified. How can anyone humanly eat all that food? And it came with roast potatoes and salad. Plus, the owner gave us a serve of bruschetta on the house. I did not even know where to start. I consoled myself, saying it was mostly fluffed up by heaps of mussel shells. There were slabs of grilled sea bream fillets, fried calamari rings, and just when I thought it was done, Hidden underneath were some more thick, muscular, grilled octopus tentacles who seemed to have spent all their time at the gym. Don't think I'll be able to eat any more for the next few weeks. <laughs> you know that's rubbish, right? As I eagerly take the last bite, this is also the part where I say grazie usaha as we join live Ryan outside to wrap this video up. A dinner that was. So this is the end of another day in Malta. Um, so I will end the episode right here. So I hope I've given you a good idea about um, what I've done today, what I've achieved, uh, where I've been to, uh, food I've eaten, so on and so forth. So let me know in the comment section what do you think of uh, Malta and um, do you want to come here after watching this video or have you been here before? Let me know in the comments what sort of um, suggestions, what kind of suggestions of places to go, uh, things to eat and uh, yeah I'm pretty eager to hear from you so uh, just let me know in the comments below. So in the meantime I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now so hit me up there and chuck me a follow so you can actually see what am I doing in real time and it also gives you an idea of the kind of um, YouTube videos that will be coming up on my channel. In the meantime, um, take care all of you and I will see you bright and early tomorrow for another episode. I'll see you around. Bye!